to get the best out of ourselves, obviously we need to know ourselves really, really well. Hi, I'm Tobias Atkins, uh, the CEO and Director of Atkins Health. I just wanted to continue on my chat with you guys from last week where we started to talk a little bit about um, delving deep into ourselves, analyzing ourselves or analyzing our past and, and kind of looking at it more as data to help kind of get to know ourselves a little bit better so that we can obviously push forward and, and start to achieve. So one of the biggest things that I've had the, fort uh, the fortune of kind of figuring out or, or seeing because I work with so many different people um, who are all trying to achieve some form of goal is that the ones who really kind of have a deep understanding of who they are and how they work seem to obviously get the results that they are looking for at a faster and, and uh, I suppose better kind of rate um, so to kind of give you a bit more of an example, because it's kind of hard to explain. Oh, this is Siri, by the way. Um, this is my brother-in-law's little puppy that we've uh, kind of owned or, or adopted, <laughs> Cass and I. So um, yeah, she's a gorgeous little caboodle. Um, anyway, back on track. So um, what I'm trying to get at is a lot of people they come to me um, and they say, "Look, I, I want to, I want to get to this place. I, you know, I want to get out of pain, or I want to get this kind of performance, or this kind of body." Um, and obviously, I, I deal a lot in the physical realm in terms of um, the human anatomy and the body. But what I have found is that those who can come to me and start to talk about their habits and what they're used to doing, you know, what things they're good at, what things they're not so good at, and they start to, to deconstruct who they are as a person, um, I find that we can really work a lot more together. Um, and it makes my job a lot easier because it means that I can be a lot more targeted with my approach. So to give you a really, really easy and good example, um, is our motivation so what drives us to to kind of move forward is it the ability to help others or is it um the ability to kind of feel good uh are you an internally motivated person or an externally motivated person now if you read everything everything says um that you have to you know develop internal motivation and i'm not here to necessarily disagree with them or those people or, or even the notion but what I am here to say is that one of the biggest things that we've got to do when starting new habits or, or trying to, to begin a journey to, to reach a goal is we need to get a win on the board. And I can't stress how important this is. Uh, so what I kind of mean is we don't want to start, you know, for instance, an exercise journey from doing zero exercise a week to trying to do five days a week it's not really achievable, not very realistic. We might be able to do it for, for one week, maybe two, and we'll get burnt out and exhausted. So it's really important that we set ourselves up in a way that we can actually achieve those goals. The next thing to then do is go, right, well, typically, am I an externally motivated person or internally motivated person? Can I sit down on a task um, that has nothing to do with anybody else and really nut it out and, and be driven and determined enough to, to reach my goals without any kind of external factors. So a lot of people aren't this way inclined. I personally am not this way inclined. So when I start out a, a, a new kind of goal or a new thing that I want to achieve, I tap into the fact that I know I'm an externally motivated person and I put things in place that will mean that I need to kind of rely on or or my actions will impact on somebody else and and that makes me motivated and driven to kind of get me through those first in, in initial habit building kind of processes so to give you an example for, for myself when I'm wanting to start um, a new exercise regime I'll have to often set up an exercise partner so someone that I have to meet at the gym um, and train with you know, so when I'm waking up at 4.30, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning and I'm, I'm really struggling to come up with the motivation to get out of my nice warm bed, I can turn around and go, shit, no, I have to go because I've got my buddy there waiting for me and I don't want to let him down. And so that will be enough to get me out of bed. Now, after about two, three weeks, I, I no longer necessarily need a buddy. Not, not saying that I'm not going to train with them, but 
if he doesn't rock up, I'm still motivated enough or got my habits built enough now that I can I can go on my own and, and I've developed that internal drive or that habit to kind of keep pushing forward. So I think that's one really, really important thing. Another really important thing is to kind of realize what we are good at and what we are not so good at and then kind of go through that not so good at list and, and determine which are the out of those lists we actually care about. So I think one thing that a lot of these um, professional or personal development kind of stream of, of videos and things kind of talk about is you must, you know, work on your weaknesses, etc., etc. What I'm kind of here to say is I don't necessarily believe on believe in that. I believe that you need to work on a weakness that you care about. Because if it's not important or it doesn't matter, or better still, you can find someone else to replace that weakness, why would you go about doing something that you're not actually interested in doing? To me, I'm all about trying to spend more and more time in our genius mode. And our genius mode is just a really kind of quirky, wanky tool, if you want, that suggests that doing things that you like doing and things that you're good at more than 80% or 80% of the time that you're alive. That obviously is going to create an incredible amount of fulfillment, um, an incredible amount of productivity, and ultimately an incredible amount of success. So what I do is if I'm finding myself doing things that I really don't like doing, I ask myself a few questions. One of them is, do I really need to do this? Like, is what I'm doing important? And if the answer is yes, I go, okay, cool. I'll move on to the next question. And I ask myself, am I the best person to be doing this? And if the answer is no, the next question is obviously, well, who is? And if the answer is yes, but I don't like doing that, I go, well, what is needed? What skill set do I possess over somebody else that makes me the best person to do this? And once I work out that skill set, my next step is then, how do I teach someone else to do this that may be interested in doing this so that I don't have to do it again? And I'm also helping someone, if you think about it, in the long run as well, because I'm helping someone else progress and grow. And just because I'm not interested in it or don't want to do it doesn't mean that somebody else doesn't. So I suppose this kind of little chat with Toby, um, uh, yeah, is, is more or less taking that analysis to the next level. So taking the information we spoke about last week and going, right, well, how and what can I look at in my life to kind of reconstruct my tasks or things that I do on a daily basis to mean that I can spend more time in happiness or doing things I like doing or things that I'm good at. So I hope that, um, I hope that is some really kind of practical, simple advice um, that I can give to you guys. Um, oh, another, another perfect example is uh, I had a client once who was saying that um, she wasn't in a very good headspace at the moment. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, explain to me why. And I'm like, well, you know, life at home's pretty frustrating at the moment. I'm like, explain to me why it's frustrating. And she said, well, you know, I'm getting really, I'm on a really short fuse. Like, I'm getting frustrated and annoyed at my family really, really quickly. And I said, okay, well, what is it that they're doing that's making you so upset? And I said, well, they're not helping clean the house. And I said, okay, um, do you like cleaning the house? And she said, no, I hate it. Like, and I said, well, what parts of it do you hate? And she said, I hate doing the dishes. I hate mopping the floors. I hate vacuuming the floors. And I said, okay. And none of your family members enjoy that? And she said, no, like no one in my family does it, but you know, someone's got to do it. So I, I have to do it and they don't. I said, okay, well, how important, how much is this one little thing in your life really affecting you? She said, incredible amounts. It's affecting my relationship with my spouse. It's, it's making me frustrated with my, my, my children. I said, well, how much, if you could put a dollar value to that, how, how, how much, you know, how much is it taking away from you? And she said, oh, an unlimited amount. Like, I, I can't even explain it. I said, well, could we not look at maybe then outsourcing that information or outsourcing those jobs? Could we not look at, you know, getting a cleaner? She goes, oh, no, no, I'm not a rich person. I'm like, well, could, could you not afford 50 bucks a week for the happiness of you and your family? Like, is there $50 that you could save somewhere else, you know, that you would not necessarily need to, to spend, that you could spend on that? I said, look, you're coming to me. What, look, I, I enjoy our time and I think our time is very, very important, but 
I would sooner you not come to me next week and spend that $50 on, on a cleaner to come out and clean your house so that you could have fulfillment in your life, you know, next, starting next week. How about that? And, and she did. She implemented that and still to this day gets a cleaner out and she's never been happier. So things that seem so far-fetched necessarily aren't. And, and it's about kind of analyzing these things and reflecting on these things um, that really kind of can be incredibly powerful. Uh, so I hope you get a lot out of that. Um, I'm looking forward to chatting to you guys next time. Um, what we're going to talk about next time is most likely kind of going to delve back into health a little bit more. But again, this is mental health, which is incredibly important as well. So um, yeah, check in and uh, thanks for having a chat.